everybody, I'm out with biz.com and today's video is about remote control again. And there's that little buggy completely made out of Fisher Technique. And I'm gonna show you how you can control that thing with this, a Fanduino Joystick Shield version 1.a. The only version I ever saw in my whole life. But doesn't matter, um, I got it from the People's Republic of China and look at this, uh, small damage along the way, it's quite a long way from where it came from, but it uh, doesn't look too serious, I, I think we can, we can handle that. Uh, so this is a joystick shield for all your robotic experiments and let's unpack it. For my children I understand that unpacking is quite big on YouTube, so I'd like to boost my subscribers and my viewers with this unpacking video. Yeah, it's yeah, this will take a take a while. It's very good for the statistics of my viewers, but I'll hang on, we'll get there eventually. So, oh boy, yeah, quite it completely penetrated the package. Is it? Right. Oops, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh no. Oh, right. No, that's just normal practice. Uh, the user has to assemble this himself or herself, and this will be my first engineering feat of today. So it fits very snugly, and there we have it our joystick shield with four large buttons and two small buttons smd type on the board and what's this this is a small slider switch you have to set it to five volts for your arduino uno and of course you can put it to the other side for three volts if you have another board Ooh, yeah we have to straighten those things a little bit uh, well, perhaps my Dutch clone can do that. Yeah. Arnout, oh, there Arnout, yeah, are you yeah, there? Yeah, yeah you can you do that you while I go on and what? take our viewers oh, through which yeah, ports I can use? Yeah. 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 Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. R, uh, X and TX. Yeah, something wrong? Yeah, that's slightly at an angle. If you can use your soldering iron to, to straighten that out, that'll be great. Yeah. Don't burn your hands. And the buttons are connected to D2 until D8. If you're using SPI, there can be two SPI devices directly connected to the board, a display and a transceiver. Uh, D9 until D13 are also taken. And the joystick on the first two analog ports and I2C bus on the, f on the last two. So that'll leave you with only two free analog inputs or outputs. It's clear. So let's see how this thing connects to a Arduino Uno board. Well, first of all, it got completely different dimensions, as you can see, and it doesn't align. I should say it should be something like this, but no, no, you have to align the, those little holes there, I guess. Yeah, that leaves two. Yeah, two connections of the terminals unused. This is bit weird but okay once you have it you can never do it again in a wrong way I guess I hope so okay this is it yeah and there you have it it mounted on the Arduino like that gives you a little bit of space on the right side underneath so you can put your 9 volt battery there I guess yeah of course on the left side there you have your SPI bus on the board that connects directly to an NRF24 L01 transceiver module. PA stands for power amplifier, it's on the transmitter side. And on the receiving side you have an LNA, a low noise amplifier. The thing comes with a separate antenna that you can screw on and there is also a module without the antenna. But because mine has an antenna I fixed a small support to rest it upon the USB terminal over there so there it is and last step will be the 9 volt battery compartment that I easily fix with some velcro here it has an on off switch on it and it will complete our great joystick shield I've uploaded a sketch with which outputs to the serial monitor so you can show what happens inside when I push those buttons. First of all, 
A button, as you can see, it goes to the ground. Second one is the B button, the C button, and we have the last big button, the D. You have F and E on the board, SM SMD types, and there is also a switch in the joystick. Look at that. When you go completely to the bottom, to the left, you have zero, and the top right will give the maximum value of 1023. Very nice, an analog joystick with a lot of buttons. To show you the concept of bi-directional communication of this transceiver modules, I'll fix a LED, an LED to, the, to one of the three analog ports that I'll configure as an output to show you that it's also possible to receive things on the, on the transmitting side. Okay, it has a small LED on the board as you can see and it's switched on. And as you understand, I already uploaded my sketches, so let's switch the receiver on. There it is. And as you can understand, those four buttons here are represented on the receiver side with these four LEDs, and these two LEDs are corresponding with these SMD buttons. The small SMD button on the experiment board of the receiver I use to light this uh, LED on on the transmitter side. Let's see if it works. First one. Yeah! Haha! <laughs> That's great. And as you can see it's quite easy. These are a little bit more tricky. Yeah, that's a blinker. And the other button here on the board, also a blinker. Wow! That's it. And as you can see it's, it's really communicating very nice. Uh, oh, there is one button inside the joystick, if I push it, yeah, that's also communicated. And I can use the small uh, switch on the prototype board on the receiving side to light up this LED on the transmitter. Which very much proves there's two-way communications going on there. Very handy to give feedback from your robotics module to your headset, to your transmitter. Okay, well, it's time to do something practical with it. For instance, remote control this buggy from the book Fisher Technique Roboter Meet Arduino, a Fisher Technique model that we can control with this transmitter module. And that leaves us with a quick look at the wiring. Because we use SPI, we use pin 11 and 12, uh, 9 and 10 for C and CSN, and SCK on 13 to communicate with the module. Uh, a motor shield is used, as you can see on the buggy, and the buggy motors, they connect to M1 and M2. This is all you need. I can light the, the LEDs, and I can light the blinkers, and yeah, I couldn't come up with more practical functions. But I can also talk back to my transmitter here. And there it goes. Oh boy, this will keep me off the streets in Corona lockdown times for a long time. Oop, look at it going and it's controlled very smoothly with it. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time with my next project. Stay healthy, stay safe. Bye bye.